All right, 89, we have a particle that moves along a straight line for six seconds so that its velocity in centimeters per second is modeled by this graph here. We got a straight line, a slope, straight line, horizontal line, slope, horizontal line. During the time interval zero to six, what is the total distance the particle travels? Okay, so this model's velocity. So I believe what they're gonna um, be getting at here is so you recognize that when you integrate velocity, you'll get displacement. So in order to find distance, whenever you have a negative velocity, you need to make sure, so over here, you need to make sure that you treat it as a positive quantity. So you can see that if you were to simply integrate from zero to six, this positive quantity would cancel, well, some of the positive quantity would get canceled out by this negative quantity. So that would be okay if you wanted to do displacement because displacement is change in position. But in distance, we want to treat everything like a positive quantity. So integrate from zero to three and then integrate from four to six, but make this a positive quantity. So then let's, this is simple because you can just use um, geometry. So this is just a two by two square. So this has an area of four. This is a triangle, half the base times height, one times two. So half of one times two, so this is just one. Here we got another tr half triangle or other small triangle. This is just gonna be a ha one half. And this is another, this is just a square, so one. So just add all these up, train them all as positive values. Four, five, five and a half, six and a half. And so the answer would be six and a half centimeters, D. Ninety. Let let f be a twice differentiable function on the open interval a to b. If f prime of x is greater than zero on a to b and f double prime of x is less than zero on a to b, which of the following could be the graph of f? So if f prime of x is positive, then we know that the graph is increasing. So f would look something like this. But since the second derivative is negative, that tells you that it's going to be concave down. So we're looking at something that's increasing, but concave down, maybe something like that. So it would just be C, that would be the only one that would make sense. This is increasing, but it's concave down, as you can see. The answer is C. The last two. The graphs of f and g are shown above. If h of x equals f of x times g of x and h prime of x is, or h prime of six is. So this is gonna just involve the chain rule or product rule. So if we took the product rule and just wanted to find h prime of x, that would be f prime of x times g of x plus f of x times g prime of x. So when we want to find h prime of six, we just replace our x's with six. So f prime of six times g of six plus f of six times g prime of six. So f prime of six, we look at when x is six, so two, three, four, five, six, so this is six. So f prime of six. So we look at the slope of this of this line at this point, not the value. So the slope here going down two to the right one is negative two. So this will be negative two g of six. So here we actually look at the value. So one, two, three, four. So g of, g of six would be four, so we get negative two times four, plus f of six. So now we look at the actual value. The value of y at this point is just two, times g prime of six. So we go back to this point and we look at the slope. It's negative, negative one half, right, this slope line right there. 
So we get negative eight minus one. So we get negative nine. And so the answer is A. All right, last one. In the xy plane, the graph of the twice differentiable function, y equals f of x is concave up on open interval 0 to 2, and is tangent to the line y equals 3x minus 2 at x equals 1. Which of the following statements must be true of f, of the about the derivative of f? OK, so let's draw a little sketch of what this could look like. Um, so remember, concave up is doing something like this. And the tangent line at x equals 1 So we plug in one into here, it would be one, three, three minus two. So they would intersect at one, one. The tangent line looks something like this at that point. It's not very good, but so this is the line y equals three x minus two. So which of these would make sense? So it looks like we're looking at the derivative of x, of, um, of f of x. What's the derivative? What basically they want to see the behavior of f prime of x at this point. So let's just say that let's say that one is over here, and that two or not the one. I'm sorry, zero is over here, and we'll say that two is like over here. So f prime of x is less than or equal to 3 on the interval 0 0.9, 1. So it now is narrow, narrowing and more over here. So OK, so I think, in, OK, so it's, this is the key now. Since this is concave up, this is telling you that, that the derivative is increasing, or f prime is increasing. So as you get, as x gets larger and larger, f prime gets larger and larger, or the slopes get steeper and steeper. So the, if you did another tangent line here, it would be more steep than this line. Or if you did another one here, it, it would be more steep. But if you go to the left, they would be less steep. They'd be more flat. So what we can say is then that f prime of x is less than or equal to 3 on the interval before that, which is 0.9 to 1, that would be okay. That would be true because as long as it's not more than three, this holds. That means that means it, that that means that it's not going to violate this this concept. So A would be okay. A, I mean, the answer would be A. And let me just go over the other ones just in case. Need some clarity. F prime of x. So T wouldn't be B because that would be the that wouldn't be concave up. That because that, that would violate the concept of being concave up of concavity because the derivatives have to increase when you go from left to right. And that would be the opposite of this. So it can't be b um, f prime of x. It can't be negative because um it's um it's a positive value. Or the derivative is positive. And f prime of x is greater than zero on the interval 0.9 to 1.1. My phone is ringing. Um, now for d, now d could be true, but it's asking which must be true because it's possible that the derivative is um, not greater than zero on this interval. You know, so it's not that it's, um, it, it could be true, but it's not that it has to be true. And E, it, yeah, again, it's the same, same, and it's not going to be constant. They're saying concave up, so it's changing. So the answer is definitely A. Okay, so there we go. So I hope that helps. Good luck.